Building moisture prevention is closely related to improving the durability, thermal insulation performance, and the indoor environmental quality of buildings. When the indoor air with high temperature and humidity encounters the inner surface of the enclosure structure below the dew point temperature, the surface condensation will occur. When the water vapor entering the enclosure structure encounters the interface below the dew point temperature, the internal condensation will occur. The main factors influencing the damp of exterior enclosure structure are first, a range of humidity in structural materials, second, moisture entering structural materials during construction, third, Moisture infiltrating from the soil into the enclosure structure due to capillary action. Fourth, due to the effect of the rain and snow, moisture penetrates into the enclosure structure. Fifth, using moisture in management. Sixth, moisture absorbed from the air due to the hygroscopic effect of materials. Seventh, Moisture in the air condensed on the surface and inside of the enclosure structure. Think about it. Which one is the most dangerous? Certain or periodic moisture exposure can be improved after the weather improves our ventilation, while long-term or sub-zero moisture exposure will reduce the structural strength and affect the durability of the building. Reduce the thermal resistance of the envelope structure and affect the building's durability and thermal performance. Breeding bacteria affecting environmental hygiene. Therefore, the last one is the most harmful, and the measures need to be taken to avoid it. The moisture transfer of enclosure structure is calculated according to the steady moisture transfer and the parcel pressure of water vapor in the indoor and outdoor air is considered as a fixed value. The transfer of liquid moisture inside the envelope structure and the mutual influence of heat and moisture exchange are not considered. The calculation method of steady moisture transfer is similar to the calculation method of steady heat transfer. Water vapor permeability is equal to the ratio of the indoor and outdoor water vapor parcel pressure difference to the water vapor permeability resistance. The water vapor permeability resistance is equal to the thickness divided by the water vapor permeability coefficient. The water vapor permeability coefficient refers to the amount of water vapor permitting through one square meter in one hour in an object with a thickness of one meter. The parcel pressure difference of water vapor on both sides is one pascal. It shows that the air permeability of the material is related to the packness of the material, temperature and humidity, and calculate with average. The greater the porosity of the material, the stronger the air permeability. Since the moisture transfer resistance of the inner and outer surface of the envelope is very small compared with the water vapor permeability resistance of the material there, it is ignored when calculating the total water vapor permeability resistance, which is equal to the sum of the water vapor permeability resistance of each layer. The parcel pressure of water vapor on the inner and outer surface of the building envelope are approximately taken as PI and PE. The calculation of the actual water vapor parcel pressure inside the envelope structure is similar to the calculation of the internal temperature, except that the indoor and outdoor temperature is replaced by the indoor and outdoor water vapor parcel pressure and the total thermal resistance is replaced by the total water vapor permeability resistance and the sum of the thermal resistance of their van to their M1, which is calculated from the indoor side, is replaced by the sum of the water vapor permission resistance. 
whether internal condensation will occur in the envelope structure can be judged by the following steps using the graphic method. First, determine PI and PE according to the indoor and outdoor air temperature and humidity. Calculate the actual water vapor parcel pressure of each air of the envelope and draw the actual water vapor parcel pressure line P. The outdoor air temperature and the humidity of the heating building adopts the heating period average value of the outside air temperature and relative humidity. Second, according to the indoor and outdoor air temperatures, determine the temperature of its air of the enclosure structure. Look up the table to obtain the corresponding saturated water vapor parcel price value and draw the saturated water vapor parcel price line, PS. Third, according to whether the actual water vapor parcel price line, P, and the saturated water vapor parcel price line, PS, intersect, determine whether condensation occurs inside the enclosure. The intersection indicates that the actual water vapor parcel pressure is greater than the saturated water vapor parcel pressure and the conditions occurs. And the non-intersection indicates the actual parcel pressure of water vapor is less than the parcel pressure of saturated water vapor. The condensation does not occur. When the water vapor permeability coefficient of the material changes from large to small, water vapor encounters greater resistance here, and the condensation is most likely to occur here. This interface that is most prone to the condensation and has the worst condensation is called the condensation interface inside the envelope. Think about it. On which side of the envelope does the condensation interface occur? How is the condensed water trained? As can be seen from the figure, the condensation interface is located on the side where the water vapor flows out. Compared with the outdoor in winter, the indoor is high temperature and high humidity, and the direction of the heat and humidity transfer is from indoor to outdoor and the internal temperature of the enclosure also gradually decreases from indoor to outdoor, even below zero. Therefore, the condensation interface in winter is located on the cold side of the envelope, which is most harmful. The difference between the water vapor concentration strength on both sides of the condensation interface is the condensation strength, which is equal to the water vapor concentration strength of the air entering the condensation interface from the side with high water vapor parcel price, minus the water vapor concentration strength of the air from the condensation interface into the side with low water vapor parcel price. The total amount of condensation during the heating period can be estimated by the number of days in the local heating period times 24 hours and the condensation intensity. The increase in the humidity of the insulation layer material during the heating period can be estimated by dividing the total condensation amount during the heating period by the thickness of the insulation air and the density of the insulation material. Below, you can learn how to determine surface condensation and the internal condensation by calculation through two example problems. Let's look at surface condensation first. Please check whether condensation occurs on the inner surface of the outdoor wall. It is known that the indoor air temperature is equal to 18 centigrade. The relative humidity is equal to 60%. And the average outdoor temperature during the heating period is minus 12 centigrade. The solution to this problem is, first, find out the thermal conductivity of each layer of the material and calculate the thermal resistance of each layer. Second, calculate the inner surface temperature of the envelope. Then, according to the indoor temperature and the humidity, find the indoor saturated water vapor parcel pressure 
and calculate the indoor dew point temperature. Finally, the calculated inner surface temperature is compared with the dew point temperature to determine whether surface condensation has occurred. It can be seen from finger light. This is a three-layer actinal wall from indoor to outdoor direction is plus board mineral wool and the ceram that concrete thickness is 10, 70, 35 mm. According to the direction of heat transfer in winter has been marked there, 1, 2, 3. First, the thermal resistance results obtained by dividing the thickness of the material there by the thermal conductivity are listed in the table. The heat transfer resistance of the outer surface is 0.04 in winter. The heat transfer resistance of the inner surface is 0.11, and the sum of the thermal resistance of the three there is 1.166. The total thermal resistance is 1.31. Then, according to the calculation formula of the inner surface temperature of the envelope structure, the inner surface temperature is 15.48 centigrade. According to the indoor temperature of 18 centigrade, the parcel pressure of the indoor saturated water vapor is 2062.5 pascal. According to the calculation formula of relative humidity, the actual parcel pressure of water vapor is obtained as 1,237.5 pascal. Taking the actual water vapor parcel pressure as the central reacher value, the dew point temperature is 10.1 centigrade. Finally, comparing the inner surface temperature of 15.48 centigrade with the dew point temperature of 10.1 centigrade with the inner surface temperature is greater than the dew point temperature, it can be seen that surface condensation will not occur. Next, let's look at internal condensation. Please check whether condensation occurs inside the outer door. It is known that indoor air temperature equals 16 centigrade, relative humidity equals 60%. Average outdoor temperature during heating period equals minus 4 centigrade. Average relative humidity equals 50%. The solution to this problem is, first, find out the thermal conductivity and water vapor permeability coefficient of its layer of material and calculate the thermal resistance and water vapor permeability resistance of its layer. Secondly, according to the indoor and outdoor temperature and humidity, find the indoor and outdoor saturated water vapor parcel pressure and calculate the indoor and outdoor extra water vapor parcel pressure. Then calculate the internal temperature and the actual water vapor parcel pressure of each there. Finally, according to the calculated saturated water vapor parcel pressure value, and the actual water vapor parcel pressure value, draw the saturated water vapor parcel pressure distribution line and the actual water vapor parcel pressure distribution line and judge whether internal condensation occurs according to whether the two lines intersect. As can be seen from the picture, this is a three-layer outer wall. The directions from indoor to outdoor are lamp motor, foam crate and vibrating molding brick board with the thickness of 20, 50 and 140 mm respectively. The direction of the heat flow in winter has been marked there 1, 2, 3. The first step calculation thermal resistance and water vapor permission resistance. Calculate the thermal resistance of each there according to the method that the thermal resistance is equal to the thickness of the material layer divided by the thermal conductivity and calculate the water vapor permeability resistance of each there. According to the method that the water vapor permeability resistance 
as equal to the thickness of the material there, divided by the water vapor permeability coefficient, and then sum up to obtain the total thermal resistance and the total water vapor permeability resistance, in which the outer surface heat transfer resistance is 0.04 in winter. The inner surface heat transfer resistance is 0.11. The sum of the three their thermal resistance is 0.461, and the total thermal resistance is 0.611. The total water vapor permeability resistance is 2517.13, ignoring the white transfer resistance of the inner and the outer surface and calculated by the sum of the water vapor permeability resistance of the three layers. The second step calculates the water vapor parcel pressure of the indoor and outdoor air. According to the room temperature of 16 centigrade, the saturated water vapor parcel pressure is 1817.2 pascal, multiplied by the indoor relative humidity of 60%. And the actual water vapor parcel pressure is 1080.3 pascal. According to the outdoor temperature of minus 4 centigrade, the saturated water vapor parcel pressure is 437.3 pascal. And the actual water vapor parcel pressure is 218.7 pascal by multiplying the outdoor relative humidity by percent 50. The third step calculates the temperature and the water vapor parcel pressure of its inner layer. According to the calculation formula of the internal temperature of the envelope structure, the temperature of the inner surface is 12.4 centigrade. The temperature of the interface between the first layer and the second layer is 11.6 centigrade. And the temperature of the interface between the second layer and the third layer is 3 centigrade. The outer surface temperature is minus 2.7 centigrade. The saturated water vapor parcel pressure values are found to be 1438.5 pascal. 1,365.2 pascal, 757.3 pascal, 488 pascal in sequence. According to the calculation formula of water vapor parcel pressure inside the envelope structure, the actual water vapor parcel pressure of the interface between the first layer and the second layer is 1032.6 pascal, and the actual water vapor pressure of the interface between the second layer and the third layer is 945.5 pascal. Use the found saturated water vapor parcel pressure value to draw the saturated water vapor parcel pressure line and use the obtained actual water vapor parcel pressure value to draw the actual water vapor parcel pressure line. The two lines intersect at the interface between their 2 and 3, indicating the presence of the internal condensation between their 2 and 3. The first step calculates the condensation in density. The saturated water vapor parcel pressure at the condensation interface is the saturated water vapor parcel pressure at the interface between the second layer and the third layer. The water vapor permission resistance on the inflow side of water vapor is equal to H1 plus H2, which is equal to 418.18. The water vapor permeability resistance on the outflow side of water vapor is equal to H3, which is 2098.95. PA and PB are the water vapor parcel pressure of indoor and outdoor air, which is equal to 1090.3 pascal and 290.7 pascal. Bring into the calculation formula of condensation intensity and obtain 0.54 grams per square meter per hour. You can follow these two example questions to check 
whether there are hidden dangers of surface condensation and internal condensation in your building design work and the surrounding physical buildings. You can also try to continue to calculate the total condensation amount during the heating period and the humidity increment of the insulation material during the heating period. You can also think about how to tax the surface condensation that we commonly see in spring and summer.